Let's get started with a pro, uh, quick pledge of the uh, pledge of allegiance. Excuse me. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this is our council committee meeting, September 20th, 2016. First item, first item on the agenda is under Public Works. Uh, Mr. Skidmore, are you ready to talk about this, the sidewalks and sidewalk grants? I think Mr. Field will be able to help you on all these grants that they got available. Okay, we'll, right. we'll, we'll take care of that one. Okay, thank you. You're okay. welcome, sir. Um, in the past couple months, we have applied for three different sidewalk grants. One of them we talked about at the last meeting, and that was for Dalwick Drive. Um, OKI, uh, if you remember at the last meeting, I said it looked very favorable that we were going to get that. It's about a $3 million project. Uh, we're partnering with Boone County. Uh, it's a 20% match. Um, it's in like 2.8, 2.9 million right there. Um, so we're figuring our 10% of that will be about $270,000. Uh, however, <clears throat> That is an unbudgeted item. And we talked about this a little bit at the last meeting that we need to discuss this to add it on. Uh, if in fact we get this approval for this grant, uh, it's gonna have to be a budget amendment. Um, I do not have um, the exact dates of this, but we do believe that probably it will be construction. If it's awarded this year, we may be able to get construction began in the beginning of this fiscal year, at the end of this fiscal year, the beginning of next calendar year. So that was one of them. Uh, we will know um, at the next meeting, I will have a, a for sure whether or not we got awarded that grant. Um, but it looks very favorable. Uh, I'll say this, St. Eve, uh, with their offices out there now, was a real proponent of this grant. I don't know how much influence they had, but the letters of support that we got from all the surrounding businesses out there maybe had something to do with it. It will have some economic impact, I believe, to the city. Uh, all the businesses out there have requested this sidewalk because they don't have any. Uh, transportation of getting employees to those locations to work, they're all having trouble. Uh, Tank is going to add another bus stop out there. They've already added one, but there's a bus stop along the side of the road with no sidewalks. Um, and in our area alone out there, we probably have, and Mr. Hahn, you can correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken here, if I'm a little high or low, but um, probably in the Bashuku building, there's somewhere around 900 or 1,000 people working now. Uh, Convergis is probably six or seven hundred people. There's another three or four hundred right there at Wild Flavors, um, and, and the other things that are going on out there with ADM that's out there now. They get up and running. You know, there's another three or four hundred. Every one of those businesses have asked for this sidewalk. We applied for this grant, so I think it'll be an economic investment. And that's where our land is available for future development. So it'll only enhance that. So that's one decision that we'll have to make. On the other side of this, we applied for two other grants. What, what did you say that the, the city's <clears throat> contribution with that to, to that project would be? About 270000 okay. somewhere around there. Yeah. We're going to split it with Boone County. It's a 20% match, so our 10% will be about two, 270, 280. It's according to what that grant comes in at. With some different numbers, we have to deal with the highway department because it's a state route also out there. Dalwick Drive is a state route. Uh, they had some preliminary numbers that didn't quite agree with the numbers that we had provided for the grant. We have agreed on some, and that was just, just at that $2.8 million mark. So we'll see what the grant gets approved for and then what the project actually comes in at. Okay. Um, the other two is the Narrows Road. So Narrows Road is in our budget this year. Uh, to we have $150,000 in there, and that would take it from Brightly Boulevard all the way up to where Firehouse or the East Public Station is, and then it would have connected on to uh, the trail that goes back uh, through the glades, I guess, of Erlanger, uh, then take us over to, that would connect that sidewalk system over to the park. Um, we have submitted a grant that would not only do that, it would, it would now go from Layhench down on the Brightleaf Extended. It would take it all the way down to Nelson Road, all the way down Nelson to, so Wingate? Yes. Yeah, Ms. The Wind, Winfield? Uh, Winfield. It's Winfield. And that would then complete that whole sidewalk system out there. So we have applied for that grant. 
again, we have monies in our budget for that, that, that project to do the part I said. We've added on to that, so that's going to come in at a little more than what it was, but we would still only have to do a match on that one. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll get that grant and we will be able to take that money <clears throat> that we have budgeted and use it as our match. Um, I don't remember the exact number, Mr. Viox, that we applied for. I don't remember either. Yeah, but it's around the $600,000 mark. Yeah, if I remember right, the match was about, about 145, 140, about 140, 150. yeah, 140, 150,000 on that one. Uh, again, we have that money budgeted, so instead of constructing just the partial sidewalk, if we get that grant, we can do the whole sidewalk and use that money for that. Also, uh, we in that same one, we applied for a grant for Division Street that would have run a sidewalk from Crescent Avenue all the way up to Riggs Avenue. Um, that one is about the same amount of money. Um, Mr. Viax is looking through papers now. It's about the same amount of money. Those are both are transportation grants. So the chances of us getting both of those grants, again, I said this before, and when we ended up getting one, so I don't want to mislead anybody. But in fact, uh, that's one that was on the sidewalk plan for all along. That would be a safe routes to school grant, uh, but they all coming from transportation money. Um, that one's about the same. So if in fact, uh, we would have to do a, a match on that one. It would be about that same amount, about $140,000, $150,000. Um, our suggestion is that we do not, we have monies budgeted in um, the um, budget this year for the continuation of the beautification of the Donaldson Road project. Uh, there's $160,000 in there. We, as a staff, and we met with the mayor and Mr. Riox, think that we should take those monies and we should switch them from Donaldson Road and we should use them on these other projects if in fact we can do that. That will also allow us to go ahead and get Nelson Road completed. So I believe the easements are being obtained at this time. Uh, Mr. Viox has, has presented a new uh, estimate of a sidewalk that then would go from Winfield all the way down to... Ashmont. Uh, to what, sir? Ashmont. Ashmont. So we can go ahead and get that one done. Now, we haven't applied for grant monies to get that one done. Um, so, you know, we think that there's enough in there. We do not believe we're going to get both of those other grants. But if we do not do the Donaldson project and we take the monies in from, from Narrows Road, uh, we have budgeted, and the Donaldson project, we'll have enough to do the co-payments uh, that we have to do for the grants and or the matching part that we have to do for the grants and Nelson Road. So we can get Nelson Road done put out the bid, uh, I think Mr. Viax, by October. And we'd like to take bids on that on Halloween. Halloween, yeah. And then we could award it at the first Monday, meeting in November. Monday before the first council meeting, or the council meeting in October. Yeah, and then we could award the bid, hopefully, at the first council meeting in November and then get construction and then, and those, started. Those bids were for which <clears throat> portions of the sidewalk? It's going to be it's going to be Nelson Road. That'll be the Nelson, Nelson Road from Winfield to Ashmont. This is the same project we took bids on earlier that we didn't get the easement for. Right. So we now think we're going to have those easements, and assuming that we have them, we'll, we plan to take the bids so we can present them to you on in the uh, first meeting in November. November. And what, I, so that's just from Winfield to Ashmont. Yes, sir. Okay, because I know just on the other side of that, there's a, a gap. This is not including that gap. And from Winfield part. to Brightleaf is what the what the grant covers. Yeah, I, I, I was just asking because uh, Mr. Meyer was here this evening um, from the Lake Money HOA and had brought a you know a page up here, and there, I guess there's a small gap right next to that. So I'm just trying to understand if that's included or excluded. A small gap, and I believe we talked about that, and several I believe we were going to go ahead and do that. There are several gaps, but right. we're filling all the gaps in with that grant, and the only one that's left is is right at Winfield. And we're going to, city has already obtained that easement and the public works department's going to take care of that. It's going to take care of that one. Yeah, so. And there shouldn't be any gaps when that's all completed. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff that's not in the grant would get you from Winfield to Doe Run, you know, and then that would link with, um, you know, if that continues down to Ashmont, then you're going to start to create a lot of loops in there between Deer Chase and Lakemont. Do we have? Right there. I, I, I have a different topic, uh, sidewalks, but uh, what about the one on Stevenson Road? Are yeah. we? 
get, getting anything for that, or is that kind of on hold? Is that, so we're going to have to work with the state on that one. Yeah. Our contention on Stevenson Road is the state doing all of the paving that they've done on that. They have now raised the road level right. above the sidewalk. There's no curbing left. There's no nothing. So we're trying to set meetings now with the state to, to get into discussions with them. We understand that part of the responsibility is, is, is going to be you know, probably ours, and but but a lot of it's going to be theirs. So we want to see how we attack that. But we have not applied for grant monies for Stevenson Road. Okay. And just so I make sure I'm clear on what the issues are, it, part of this is the sidewalk is almost level with the road, right? Yeah, yeah and it floods there. Really and it floods where kids can't walk through. Right. They have to go around, and I I just figured it was a safety issue. Well, and it, no, freezes, we agree. it freezes over in the winter. Right. It's mm -hmm. treacherous. Every, everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. <clears throat> okay, great. With yeah. all these different sidewalk projects and the potential grants, would it be possible to get a, a drawing of you know, those sidewalks and which sections would be included in that? Is that tough? We, we, we have them, so yeah. we can get you copies of that, okay. absolutely. Yeah. You want to you wanna have an overall, overall drawing with the pieces that we're filling in, or you want the drawing of the individual sections we're going to we're applying for the grant for yeah um i guess both uh, to see you know all of all the sidewalks that we're talking about because mm -hmm. the grant application included a plan okay for each one of the grant applications and the same thing on the nelson road right. project we got a easement for all those have okay. preliminary plans or final plans one or the other no we don't have a drawing that shows all the pieces but we certainly can produce one we have the individual ones, yeah, and, we I, and I, one, we, I we've different. got the grant files in, in Mr. Hahn's office, and we can make copies because we have copies of all those things that we sent in and submitted. So we can make you copies and, and get it to you. There is actually a, a study that you're, you've been using to root out the ones where the Safe Route to School right. program that from two thousand. It actually was done some time ago. They had some priorities on. That's what they're working on right. also. So yeah, there was, a, there was a study had done initially which ones we were going to attack and when. What about was that done? It was the done. Safe, the safe route to school? It was like, no, this this is the whole one. It was, Dave, what was the name of that? Uh, step forward. That's right, step forward. It's sitting on my desk. And, yeah, yeah, step, step, step forward. And I think it was 2004 program. is when that initial study went out. And there's a whole list. Anymore, I don't yeah. think. But every one of those that we're talking about right now, um, with the exception of probably the Nelson Road, um, part of it, um, a part of any of the sidewalk grants, because Nelson Road just wasn't developed back then at that point in time the way it is today. But it actually did do Narrows Road and actually talks about Narrows from Brightleaf um, on down to the, to the trails of, of uh, Deer Chase or whatever that is, Doe Run or whatever. Um, it, it talks about that one in there also. So these are ones that we have looked at from that and from listening to you, and I believe Ms. Skidmore is the one that brought up to me Division Street uh, that there was residents over there that talked about that. I know um, the, the walking that is that is done on Narrows Road is completely dangerous to get that done. That's why I think the only one that fits in that safe routes to school is is, is division because of the walking districts that are over here. Uh, the rest of them are the transportation part of that because there's two separate parts of that. Um, yeah, the one on Division Street actually takes you to Silver Lake Park too. So the absolutely. children walking to the park have to walk on the streets currently. Yeah, so there's benefits to all of those. And then the, the sidewalk maintenance we're holding until we get the study back, correct? Right. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And we, we had some discussions about that, and, and I know Public Works now have a line item inside their inside their budget each year for street maintenance. Uh, that is just totally separate from capital. That's just what maintaining is, maintenance is. And I think it was going to be our suggestion that when, in fact, we make some decisions about how to move forward with sidewalk maintenance, whether we're going to continue the same way and, and with the ordinance that we have today or whether we're going to accept some responsibility financially as a city to do that, then we need to change that and, and add that line item probably into public works as a maintenance item instead of a capital building item. It would be a, it would be a maintenance item. But that's a, another discussion. But I think the mayor did sign. I think we had a resolution last time approving that, so we did sign. Um, and I don't think that we're going to get that even started, probably, because that company's pretty backed up, probably till what, November? Yeah, they said about mid-November yeah. they would get started on the survey. Survey. So, 
we'll bring that back as soon as we can get it and get it. But this is good. I, I think a lot of this is good news because of, of you know we're going to be able to get some sidewalks constructed. Uh, we're going to be able to use some grant funding, hopefully, to get that accomplished. Um, uh, you know, getting the one on Dalwick uh, alone, looking at that, that was just a major, major um, thing. You know, when you talk about trying to go over top of, of 275 down Mineola, which is what this is going to do also, and then getting all the state right away that we have to get and get them a part of this, that was that was a big accomplishment if that one comes through. Or I, I think whether 270 sounds like an awful lot or 280, but you know, on, a, on around a $3 million project, if we get it done for that, we, we, we almost have to move forward with that. So are we going to be able to make a deal uh, the first meeting in October about moving the money over from balancing over to division? And well, I don't think we need to. <coughs> yeah, we don't. No, it's, it's in the budget, okay. so. so you, it would be the end of October that we'd be looking for approval on the bid. Yeah. I, actually, I take that back. It would be the first meeting in November, oh, November 1st. Okay. In which we, you know, at one point we did talk about moving or, or, or not having the meeting in November. This is kind of an odd year, though, that our first Tuesday is not the election day. So um, the plan is that we would still go ahead and have a meeting in November, and then election day would be the following week. All right. Renee? Are they still going to put any kind of a traffic light out there on that Colbert Crescent Springs? Road and that feeder road, that new feeder road that comes past all that Saint E property and yes, it is going to go up. It has been approved, and uh, it's Crescent Springs Road and Dalwick Drive. We're talking about the new signature hardware sitting there. That traffic light has been approved by the state, and I, I'm not sure. Maybe Mr. Milligan can can enlighten us as to where the process yeah, is. But. So it is, it is received approval and is just awaiting a construction of some kind to, to get it up, to, to put it up. All right, any other questions on that? Sounds great. All right, great, thank you. All right, so we'll move on to the next item under police. We've got uh, monitoring non-stopping at stop signs. Who wanted to uh, tackle this one? Or is this just general, this is just general discussion basically. I, um, to say, I don't know if Lieutenant yeah. Rader is, is up to par on, up to snuff on that or not. I don't want to put him on the spot. Yeah, so just to, just to kind of recap, um, the things that we had talked about at the last meeting was, um, this was at the intersection of um, Teakwood and Hallam. 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 Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, yeah. yeah, having folks that aren't coming to us, not even necessarily slowing down, just... We have uh, monitored, I don't know, has Sergeant Sterling been in touch with you as far as setting up the stealth radar? He set up a box and yeah. uh, a week later he took it down. I know uh, the police have actually been there. I've seen three different times. Yeah, we, we've set up several details there. Um, the issue that we have is the street itself, Teakwood, is so short that when we have a marked cruiser there, obviously, Everybody sees it, and they like to stop. Uh, I did sit there last week in my cruiser, uh, an unmarked car, and it wasn't necessarily a busy time of day, and we didn't really have anything that was um, that we could enforce. I know Sergeant Sterling is planning on putting up the radar trailer uh, on Hallam, hopefully to let people see what their speeds are. Um, the stealth radar results were really nothing, there were no speeding violations necessarily. I think it looked like on Hallam itself that the cars were going faster than they are because cars parked on the side of the road and it's kind of narrow. Uh, but I think the highest speed that we actually got was the calibration speed from the police officer that was calibrating it at 35 miles an hour. I think the next highest was like 31 or 32 miles an hour in an odd time during the night. So um, it is something that we're aware of, and we will allocate, you know, reallocate the manpower there when we have it. Um, it's not something that has been forgotten about, um, but we we are aware of it. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I was talking to Mr. Ressenthalter, um before the meeting about a, an option that he would like to uh, bring forward, and wasn't really sure how to present sure. that. Um, 
Absolutely, yeah. Could we talk about that now? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, please. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the police for monitoring that. I, um, I think I actually may have ran into you one time down there and talked to you oh, here or yeah. there. Um, but um, the, co uh, the police have actually been there a, a few times um, to give you a situation. Once my wife called me and said, hey, they're out there. They just pulled somebody over, and he just pulled up there. And I got back. And sure enough, he was down the street and came back and went up and thanked him. And while I was thanking him, there he goes, right after one. Um, Saturday morning, uh, it was about 9 o'clock. I'm loading up my truck to go to my boys' baseball game. And I already seen up Hallam, past Shortfield Crest and past the Longfield Crest there on Hallam. The cop was already up there, had somebody pulled over. I was like, I didn't even know he was out there. Well, I was loading up. He got done, come back and uh, was up in a circle. So I walked up and said hello to him and thanked him. And while I was thanking him again, he goes, got to go. Sure enough, he's right after another one. Um, he came back by and said, I'm going to sit here for a little bit. And he was like, you know, I haven't been here, you know, total a half hour. And he was right after him. And it was a Saturday. But that's really not our, you know, our, our problem isn't the speed so much because people are actually with a stop sign, thanks to Rick, um, they're slowing down coming into it, but they do. It's such a short road on, they're looking. They're looking for the police. And when they don't see, it's just, uh, okay, they're not there and keep on going. I mean, a lot of the cars that do come up, if they had to stop, they're stopping halfway into the intersection because they're going, oh, is he there, is he there, is he there? Um, but what I've done is I've come up with an idea, and I know I kind of mentioned it at the end. Um, a, a lot of our problem in the neighborhood and I'm, I'm thinking about the neighborhood as a whole, is we get a lot of traffic f between 7 and 8. I've videoed between 7 and 8, and it's amazing. We get so much traffic that skip, they come off Turkey Foot from their own neighborhoods or wherever, and they're trying to get to Dixie Highway or 75. And it'll come down Turkey Foot, and because there's 6 or 7, 8 or 10 cars or whatever at the stop sign there where the Circle K and the Gramers is, they don't want to wait. They don't want to wait their turn for everybody to stop and go. So they shoot up the short part of perimeter there at the back end. They'll hit Hallam, and away they go. And they go all the way down to, I guess, either Dixie Highway at the end of Hallam or one of the little streets, Mary or whatever, they'll shoot across and be back on Stevenson, and they skip that, that, that little thing. And the problem is they're only getting out in front of four or five cars, we'll say eight or ten to be most. But they're using a neighborhood. Um, you know, you're trying to back out of your driveway. Um, and get, you know, get your own kids to school. So what I did is I've kind of gone around. I had an idea about making that end of perimeter. There's about eight or ten houses at that end of perimeter where it's just short of the dip, which is a very dangerous intersection to come in or out of because of the dip. I had an idea of making that, blocking that off, whether we just, for a temporary thing to see how it is, six months, a year, whatever, put up guardrail, block it off, do not enter signs, you know, dead end, whatever. So I went around with that idea to make that end a perimeter, and I wish I had a map of it, but uh, so everybody could see, to make that a dead end. That way, the people that come down can't shoot into my neighborhood and shoot down my neighborhood to skip f waiting for five or ten cars, because that's the right thing to do, not use my neighborhood. So I went around, and I, I went out one night other than today. Today I went and just talked to one person, which is a friend of mine, to get their opinion on it. Um, but I've gone to about 21 houses. Out of the 21 houses, I had one, one person tell me, no way, I'm not signing it because you got your, your darn stop signs. I'll leave the profanity out. So he was already mad about the stop signs. He doesn't want to stop. Um, I had one person tell me they wish they had some more information. They didn't want to be put on the spot right now to sign. I had one other person tell me, guess what? I, I, I kind of like the option of getting out that way. I know it's not safe. He says, but tell me why you think that's good for our neighborhood. And I explained the situation of why it's good for our neighborhood, which I'll get into. Um, and he changed his mind. He said, yeah, you make ver very valid points. And one of the points I'll talk to will be about safety. Safety is a, is, is a neighborhood. When you have hundreds of people that live in your neighborhood and you go off to work at 7 o'clock and you forgot you left the garage door open, they drive by and see your garage door's open. I don't want people from other neighborhoods know my kid left their bike sitting out or I got a big wheel or a power Jeep sitting in the garage because the wife left the garage open. You know, the other safety part is, guess what? They're already in a hurry. They're trying to run. They, thank, 
Thank God we don't have bus service and a kid standing out front because half the people are going by, driving, running the stop sign like this. They're texting. Mm -hmm. We want to keep those people that don't live in our neighborhood out of our neighborhood. Make them use the main road for what it's for. 18 of those 21 houses that I've got to have all signed. All signed, and they, they agree. I don't go out that way. I won't go out that way. I might come in that way every once in a while, but guess what? For the people that live in those 10 houses there at that short part of perimeter, it would be nice for them to have, have a life again because it's constant traffic in and out of there. The people that live at that short end of perimeter that ties on to Stevenson, I thought three of them were going to hug me. They're like, you know, every time our front door opens, I freak out. Where's the kids? Because they're worried that maybe a kid went out the front door. Because you can't, they were like, we can't even use the front of our house. We can't use any part of, our, of the front of our house. And it, it's just dangerous. It's just constant flow. I couldn't imagine living on that street and all day long, all day long, just in and out, in and out, in and out. And it's a dangerous intersection. And, you know, and based on, and I started at that end and worked my way up. And these people loved it. And I just did one night. And it's crazy walking around because I'll go to your house and I'll say, this is my thought. This is my idea. What do you think? And they love it. And I end up standing there for 15 or 20 minutes talking to them. Going, I, I, I love talking to you, but i got to get to the next house. I want to get somebody else to sign. But I'm starting this process. I don't know where it needs to go from here. I think it's a good idea. I'm not trying to force this on you. I want to start a dialogue. I want to get people involved. I want to see where we need to go from there. Because, one, it's going to make our neighborhood safer, keeping people that don't belong in our neighborhoods out. And it's going to cut our traffic down incredibly, keeping those people on the street that they really belong on. So I'd love to get that to get that happen. I'm off work. I'll help do some of the labor. I don't know what guardrail costs for about 20, 30 feet. But it's already wide enough to make it, you know, almost block it off and make it and take out the center and make it a nice wide dead end so the, so the plow trucks can get in there, plow it to the end, and back on out of there, and they're done. But those people that live in these houses that I've talked to loved it, and I've only had... One person basically tell me no way, but he was already mad about the stop signs because he doesn't want to stop. Did he so, get a ticket? Um, I don't know if he has. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, I know right now the police that I've talked to have said they want to give warnings first. They kind of want to let them know that, hey, we're here watching it. We just don't want to jump down their throat. We kind of want to tell them. So, and I understand that. Um, but I think, I think this will help our neighborhood in the long run. And especially those 10 houses down at the end is going to give them a life again. Let them, let them enjoy their property. Yes, sir. How many more houses do you have to see? Um, I can show you. I mean, are you halfway? Yeah. Or are you? No, I mean, oh, okay. If you look, this is Stevenson. Mm -hmm. And this is the end of perimeter. I started with these houses. <laughs> and I've caught a, caught a few years. Yeah. I've gone up this way. I get a couple houses. Do some of these, like this person, I guess they're on vacation. I should never catch anyone. But I only went out one night. Mm -hmm. And this is in, in all these houses. I got one tell me that okay. one tell me that I like Can we get into some of those details maybe after the meeting? Oh. Okay. okay. And just so I can clarify again, we're talking about where um, perimeter meets Stevenson. Correct. Here's the, the large version. Uh, this is Stevenson. Okay. It runs down Turkey Foot sits yeah. up here. And they come down, and instead of, because they can see all the cars back mm -hmm. up, they shoot up and run down. Be mm -hmm. in, my house. in the afternoon, they know it's going to be that way, so they get on houses well, somewhere and come here. But if you block minutes. this, there's going to be no reason because that's the route. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to Bull stop trail. sign either way. So they might as well oh, just stay on the Okay. Eric drops um, the kids off. This is, um, you know, I know Mr. Fields had mentioned this might be a good um, project for our PR and communications director. Um, Director, yeah, uh, Joe Christofield. Um, I mean, this might be a good a good thing for him to go and do maybe a more more thorough survey back in there, and I'm sure he'd love your help. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for the work you've put into it so far, and we'll we'll keep this this ball rolling. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I live off. Of, I live off of Hallam on Crestline. I have the same problem coming out on Crestline in the morning between seven and eight, like you said. 
it's just one car after another. And I really think that maybe they want to avoid, um, if you go down Stevenson, you stop at that stop sign up by Mary Street, it backs up there. Plus, you've got the railroad track. Plus, if you get the red light at uh, Dixie, I timed it. It's three minutes as opposed to two minutes on Hallam. So there's lots of reasons, and they do cut through there a lot. And I know my husband and I hate it because so much <coughs> Okay. Well, again, thank you. And I think what you're proposing is a good, a good way. I mean, taking a step in that, you know, if, if the surveys come back and, and say that that's what people are in favor of, and then taking that step of putting in a guardrail for starters before we go ahead and make it into a cul-de-sac or whatever it might be, you know, Thank you. Any other discussion on that? All right. Okay, so then the next thing on the agenda here is under code building and zoning, zoning the text amendment request for the property on Dixie. Mr. Dunhoff, are you ready to talk uh, about that? Ready. It's Avon. You ready for that? Yes, if you remember at the uh, last council meeting, uh, I believe there was a, uh, a letter we received from the property owner at, at the intersection at the, on the corner of Hallam and Dixie about the U-Haul uh, trucks rentals at, at the property. We had issued a, a uh, from the zoning end, issued a letter of violation to the folks for because that zone does not permit truck rentals the IP1 zone and the highway commercial zones out in this area are, are where those are are permitted for large truck sales and leasing and, and, and such. Uh, when we issued that letter of violation, we received the letter from the property owner requesting that the city do a text amendment to allow vehicle uh, truck rentals at in that zone, which is neighborhood commercial. So that is what the request was. Is, it is horrific. This, this, that's, that's a busy intersection there, and we've changed that thing several times for that owner down there, so they could do what they wanted to do. One of the transmission shop, and we went and changed it, and they did what they did, and all of a sudden, then they moved out, and we did all the work for them, and now they want something different. I, I'm not for that area. That, that's a real nice area of town right there, and I don't want to see it jumped up with a bunch of U-Haul U -haul trucks sitting there. Mm -hmm. Got a U-Haul place up in Ellsworth. They want to go get one, but we don't need to have that corner lot where they're renting everything okay. out and they can rent. So that's just too big of a lot for me. I would, I'm dead against that. You, you said truck rental is allowed in IP? Truck, rental, truck sales and rental is, is permitted out in the uh, I, IP zones. Okay. And the highway commercial zone out, right. out by the interstate. Okay. Where the Peterbilt uh, building and the, out in that area. Okay. And then that would be all along Kent Lands Road and <laughs> up in there. So, but not on Dixie Highway. All right. Yeah, I just have a traffic concern um, <coughs> with that corner. That, that's horrific. That's a bad corner right there. You have a lot of traffic. Yeah. And when the expressways close down, it gets even worse. So I, I wouldn't it's, think it's you could. It's just an eyesore. Yeah, I, I mean, they don't have really 
really good ingress and egress right there either for that, that little corner because of the traffic. How much business or revenue do we think that might generate for the city? I haven't done the numbers on, on because it's, it's really too early I, I, of, of what that would mean, just the rentals. Uh, I wouldn't think it'd be, yeah. it's very negligible of, of, of any, uh, I would think, of any revenue. Yeah, the only thing we would get off of that would be the gross receipts, right? The, the gross receipts, yeah. Because they're, they're already, they're the already in business. It's not going to add business. any more employees to their business down no. there. They're already in business. This is just another, I think, yeah. part of their business they're trying to, to start. Right. Yeah. From the used tire. And so this has this already gone to KCPC? Oh, well, no, no. They're just asking because we we would have to, only a, the we governmental entity can be the applicant on on text amendments. So okay. we would have to be the one to initiate that. So I asked, told him to write a letter, and so it would have to start with you all. And is this something that would require a vote? Yeah, so council would have to approve Mr. Hahn to make that application because only the legislative body can make a text amendment. It does not come from the executive branch. So I guess maybe what we're looking for here tonight would be a, a head nod. You know, if, if people are in favor of that, that we should even bring it up at the next council meeting or if we should not even bother. No, no, I'm no, no. I'm against it. You see one, I see one yes. Don, Renee, Kathy, what do you guys think? No? Yeah. If we let, if we let uh, add only like two or three in there, it wouldn't be bad. But, you know, he's got six or seven in there now, you know. I mean, I was, I was, uh, had the understanding that he was only going to have two or three in there, and that was going to be it. Yeah. We can fix that. We know that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, you tell him he can have two, he's going to have ten. I'm sorry. Sure. You know, this place sure. is not going to happen. Yeah. So if we, if we put a limit on something, our people are going to be down there fighting that guy every week. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely. Okay. Know. So it sounds like it, we shouldn't even bother. Just let them know that we don't want to pursue this at this point. Okay. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Thank All you, right. David. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, the next item under progress and revitalization is the House Bill 422. Code, under co code enforcement, Frank, are you ready to talk about that? Uh, yeah, if they want me to talk about it. I know we've got, <laughs> a, they got a busy schedule tonight. I will say that the documents that I presented to everybody are draft documents. They do have some minor type, typographical errors in them. They do have some provisions that are in there twice, and one of them will need to be deleted. Uh, but uh, the bottom line, unless you all want to go into further discussion, is that House Bill 422 um, <clears throat> completely revised the manner in which ordinances of the city can be enforced in a civil manner. Uh, prior to that uh, legislation, uh, the two main methods of doing it was through a code enforcement board and through a nuisance board. Uh, Erlanger has opted to enforce most of our ordinances through the nuisance board instead of the code enforcement board. We do have two of them. Both of them are in existence, uh, but we felt that the nuisance code board was more efficient because it uh, provided for a quicker hearing. Uh, so we've adopted that, that method. Unfortunately, House Bill 422 went in the other direction. They, uh, they, um, uh, repealed all of the ordinances except the Code Enforcement Board ordinance, and they combined all of the provisions into the Code Enforcement Board ordinance. So we have to change course and go through the Code Enforcement Board instead of the Nuisance Board. In fact, the Nuisance Board will be re it's a dissolved because the statute that authorizes it will the appeal of that the repeal of that statute uh, is effective on December 31st um, so we have to revise those statutes and we have to repeal the statutes that we were uh, that we had but we're not using and that's what these two ordinates do so with that brief summary I'll be glad to answer any questions that anybody might have I'd like to add something is the reason that we wanted to add this on tonight 
Uh, we had, uh, if you saw my email, we, uh, uh, Mr. Gatlin, Mr. Wickman, and myself met with American Legal. They're doing our the codification updates. If, in fact, we get this new ordinance passed and to them um, by November, it can then be included in that codification. Um, and, and again, this is more housekeeping than it is anything else. There are a couple things in here, things that we have passed since the nuisance ordinance was in effect, such as the, the trash cans. We couldn't put them out before 6 p.m., changed it to 4 p.m. We did that change. That's part of this um, and, and, and those kind of things that were in here. We talked about this a little bit. You know, if you're talking about real, real change inside here, the, the grass we talked about just before, we went from four inches to six inches. There's some of those little things that are that are, that are going to be included in this, but it's all things that we have discussed, in, in, you know, at, at meetings before, and, and you all I think have agreed on, and then some of them have been enacted by ordinances already. So um, it does it, it does do just a couple of those little things in yeah. there. The, the effect of this on the operation of the city is going to be n nothing because we're going to be operating the same way we are now. Uh, the, ordina the, the ordinances that are to be enforced are, are going to be the same, ex as, except as Mark indicated, those that you have previously wanted changed. So we did do those changes. But we're, we're not going to skip a beat. We're going to keep operating the same way. The only other thing that has to be done is that the House Bill 422 revised the terms of the Code Enforcement Board, so we're going to have to reappoint the members for the terms required by the statute. But again, that's not going to affect the way we operate. The only big effect will be instead of a person wanting a who is requesting a hearing going before the nuisance board, which was a one-person board, the city administrator, it will now go to the code enforcement board, which is a board consisting of five members. You all know who they are. None of them are uh, employed by the city. As a matter of fact, the statute prohibits the appointment of anybody that's employed by the city or as an officer of the city. Uh, so the only difference is going to be the way we conduct hearings. The way we enforce the ordinances and the ordinances that we are going to be enforced have not changed. What are you going to do with your spare time, Mark? I, I'll find something. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, yeah, this is, this. We don't have that many hearings. Well, we really don't. Uh, t two other things, too, is the electronic registry. I think it's important for council to understand that that's going to require some added staff time, and we've met internally to discuss how we handle that to maintain priority. Um, so there is some added work on that. It doesn't necessarily affect how we handle code enforcement just from a practical and procedural perspective. The city is going to have to be notifying lien holders. Right. What Mr. Gannon is referring to as a new provision in the statute that I did not identify, uh, but again, it doesn't affect the way we operate, really. The provision is a provision that was negotiated with the Bankers Association because they were uh, complaining about the enforcement and the fact that the nuisance code provided that the liens of the city were superior to the mortgage liens. And they were complaining they didn't know anything about it. And I won't go into the long detail about the uh, negotiations that went on between KLC and the Bankers Association. But the bottom line was they included a new provision that requires the city to maintain a notification system to maintain the priority of that lien. And that's something we do in-house. Uh, Mark's already develop that system, I think, uh, and it, it uh, will be a system in which there will be an online uh, registry by which banks and anybody else uh, can, can get information about civil citations that have been issued. Uh, but again, that does not affect the way we operate other than imposing that additional requirement that we have that registry, which um, is not going to be that burdensome, I don't think. Uh, well, I think Mark answered one of my questions because I saw that 6 p.m. in there. <laughs> yeah. and didn't we change right, that? Yeah. The six inches on the grass is in there. Mm. Um, but I just had a couple other questions about um, it's 2.9. Uh, 
uh, and it talks about um, the owner or custodian of the unleashed animal. Does that include cats? Because yes. we don't, uh, or does that just mean dogs? No, I, I think it means cats. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, for my own sake and for citizens' right. sake, I mean, if we see an unleashed cat <coughs> in our yard, I mean, this is a nuisance. It's, I mean, it can be because I know for a fact that in our neighborhood, the lady next door had some yeah, goslings in her side yard and a cat they, came and they, destroyed they, the little goslings and I've had them in my flower beds and after my birds and that I feed in the backyard. And Yeah, that's just what our police need to do, be chasing cats. <laughs> No, the, but what I'm saying is, you know, what, what, the, what should citizens do? I mean... The ordinance that I've prepared is the same as the ordinance that existed before. Mm -hmm. And it uses the word animal, and animal means animal. That's what I was going to say. Now, okay. If you want to change that, we can change it. But no, I, I think we should include cats. If people have a complaint, um, not necessarily call the city, but maybe call um, animal control, you know... Okay. people shouldn't just be letting zillions of cats loose in the city uh, if they're destroying property. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm a cat lover. I'm not a cat hater. What, what if we just said, the, if the un, say something to the effect of the unleashed animal being a nuisance? I mean, if people don't have a complaint about a cat being loose, then well, it shouldn't be an that's issue. That's what it does say here. I, I pretty, I'm pretty uh, sure. Well, no, it says on their property. It gets in their property. So, but, yeah, you might want to But people that. are only going to complain if it is a nuisance, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think code enforcement's yeah. going to actively pursue They're not cats. They're not call just because they see a cat loose, but if I the cat's destroying cats something. come into my yard. It doesn't bother me a bit. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes, if they third. come in and they don't bother anything, I'm cool with that, too. But I was just curious. And then the other thing, too, um, on 2.16, the outside storage. Yeah, we, this, we modified that last year, which was not included in this draft. Well, I, I, what my question is, I know I brought this up once before, and I was told it was okay. If there is a riding mower parked in the front yard on the grass in the lawn, not, not in the side yard, like you're, you're parking it there, it's just right out in the front yard, I was told that was okay. <coughs> if me, if it's not, operable, it's okay. No, I, I wouldn't know if it's operable or not, but I just think it but, looks terrible. Section 253 also includes um, stuff that we changed last year with 2418. Right, yeah. Uh, the, um, the, there's, the, the changes we made in Ordinance 2417 were not incorporated in this. Okay. <coughs> because to me, I mean, if, if you can't store your boat out there, you shouldn't be able, be able to store a riding mower either. It should be in the backyard, someplace where, you know, it's not just out in the middle of your yard in the front. I mean, that looks really bad. And I don't want Erlanger to get a bad reputation for going down the tubes because we, we allow stuff like that. I mean, sure. it's just, I, I want to make Erlanger look really, really good. Um, and then I have another issue, and I guess I need to talk to Codes about this. Some grass, we went to Heritage Days, and uh, we decided to walk back with Locust instead of Erlanger Road grass was almost a foot high and I believe it was number seven but I'm not sure but it's that little section right right after Crescent Avenue at that block right there I mean it, it was horrendous it looked really bad and I don't know if if somebody driving by could see it necessarily because there's parked cars there I don't know but I mean that's people that came to Heritage Days if they would walk past that I'm thinking Oh my goodness, what are they going to think of Earl Langer, you know? I don't want to get a bad reputation sure. for just like ignoring things like that is what I'm saying. Sure. So I thought I'd just bring it to the attention tonight since we're talking about nuisance that we, uh, if I could please take care of that. We met with the uh, codes officers this afternoon, Mr. Hahn and I did. Um, it was the day of the 20th. Today's the 20th. They've already issued 70 citations this month. Oh. So I, th I think they are... Yeah, so and they're, they may they're, have already they're fairly busy. So yeah. I didn't, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put that down. I'll, we'll tell them locust, good locust tomorrow. Yeah. That may be a vacant property, too. Could be. No, I think there was somebody sitting on the front porch, but it could yeah, be. I, 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 I drove Why by it. I know which house you're talking about. I went by it. It looked kind of vacant to me. Was, was, there, was there an inoperable uh, lawnmower in the front yard? No. <laughs> That's why it's not cut. No. The grass was not cut. 
That was perimeter. That was perimeter. I saw that one. Was there a cat on the seat? Or no cats there. Was that one the telephone company started out years and years and years ago? Is it white with green shutters? I, I don't remember. I just remember the grass being. Yeah. I'm like, oh I think my that was gosh. on my historical tour for Heritage Day. It probably was. <laughs> oh, lovely. She, she took the all the attention off of the grass. Out. We, we will. Uh, long grass. No lawnmower because we'll, the grass is. Yeah. We'll work on getting all those corrections made to this and get it out to you guys okay. as soon as possible um, so that it can be hopefully on the agenda at least for the first meeting. I can't wait. <laughs> Is there a way in the future that we can make sure that we're working with the, the most up-to-date ordinance before we distribute it to council? Uh, I'll, I'll take the blame for that one. I got it earlier and didn't oh, okay. look at it soon okay. enough. So okay. Um, yeah, and I mean, a pro uh, it, it, and we just talked with American Legal on this. I mean, I think some of these issues are going to correct themselves when we start going the online codification every ninety days. Because I think what happened here yeah, is, yeah, yeah. in all fairness, ordinance number 2417 was an ordinance prepared by myself last year. I'm sure Mr. Wickman did not have that in his computer. He, I'm sure he went online or went with what was on his computer. And it, it, it's easy to, to miss ordinances that have been done after the codification because they're not in the codification. Right. It, it, it's, so okay. if we codify more soon and more quickly, it, it, it will be easier to avoid that issue, okay. right? Okay, good. Thank you. All right, is there any more discussion on that? We'll move on then. The, the next item under economic development and finance is road repair transfer of funds. And is this a Mr. Meyer issue? Yeah. Mr. Brody, were you able to pull that stuff together? I did it all. Okay. All right. Mr. Peter? <laughs> Well, thank you. He looks surprised. Oh, boy, he learned quick. Yes, he does. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He didn't go um, to UC for nothing. <laughs> when they learn how to play basketball, they'll be okay. Um, <laughs> at, uh, does everybody have a copy of these? Are these the ones that... I didn't have I don't think I do. Um, I can make copies. Yeah, I thought I forwarded the, the, the copies to you. So that, was the, that was the ordinance. Um, if you can... I that work? Pull it up. Can you pull it up on that? At, at, at our last committee meeting, Mr. Meyer, or at our last council meeting, Mr. Meyer um, had made a couple recommendations. I don't know if you want to go through those or not, but what we did was work through a couple budget, uh, I guess, uh, samples that show the effect of those things. One of the things that we talked about was this $270,000 tonight from the grant. Uh, that we'll be having to take out of capital. So one of the, the situations that we uh, worked through was using that along with another $750,000 transferring it out to complete the other two road projects that were on that eight. Um, not so sure that it actually has to be that amount with the, with the other ones, but 750 would definitely get those done. Um, you know, historically what we've done is we've amended the budget in January. That's what we've done historically January. So uh, you get through half the fiscal year, see where we're at, go back in January and make that amendment. Um, so that's what, you know, we keep on that plan, planning for this, because these would not be able to go out. And I'll let Mr. Viox talk about those other two projects. But they would probably be spring projects to begin with. Um, but basically what this does, of course, if you take another million dollars out of our capital fund, that 270 plus the 750, we just rounded it to a million and took it off. Um, you know, it's going to drop our reserves by that much money. Um, so, if, if Sherry, I don't know if she can um, get it up. I'm not sure I sent it to you. Did I send it to you? I'm, I'm I don't searching have it you right now, and I don't. You don't see me. I didn't care. Um, but I can just, I can go over and tell you uh, pretty much what the effects of these were. Steve, can you forward that to Sherry while you're sitting back there? Thank you. And maybe she can get it pulled up. Um, we had projected um, if, in fact, we um, take the um, 750 and the 2, 270 out, uh, that would drop our unreserved fund at the end of fiscal year 17 to 4987 from $6 million, basically. So we're going we're gonna to be dropping it just a little down. That's the unrestricted reserve, correct? That's the un 
That's the unrestricted reserves. Absolutely, it's unreserved, so we can. So that still keeps our 30 percent. It still keeps the 911 money setting aside, and it still keeps the. Uh, um, there's some other per in here. The the investment gains and losses that we can't do. Um, but yes, that that is absolutely unrestricted. Okay, so we're still in we're still in fairly good shape, and yet at the end of that. Um, so again, that just plays out that, that whole way until 2019, which we did three years, uh, took it out the other two years. And by that time, at the end of that, the effect and some of the projections that we've made by continuing to lower the, the property tax that we've, we've done. Um, so our revenues are kind of short, but so I don't know how well you can see it. But if in fact, at the end of 2019, if we're looking at, um, we're looking at the same sheet. You want the other sheet? I don't know. Two of them. Yeah, there is two of them. But I want to see the, scroll up so I can see the top real quick. Yeah, that's the one we want. Yeah. So that bottom line at the end of 17, we're down to like 1.793 million in unrestricted reserves. Still again, we still have the 30% back. We still have all that. Um, there are a couple things to consider when we're looking at that. Now, this doesn't change anything with the payroll tax. This one, this, this one does not change any of that. So we are still um, contributing money to the capital asset fund on the continuing basis, the way we've increased that every year. Um, and we have not planned, and I think you're going to be hearing some things later on, but, you know, and there are some good things happening. We maybe are out of the recession. Some, some other things are coming. These are just projections of the way things stand today and what we would do if, in fact, how this was, was to go out. Um, I believe Mr. Meyer had another one, um, and another suggestion was to take uh, what we do with the payroll license fee is take a half a percent. So I don't know, you want me to talk about that, or you talk yeah, about I'm that, not, and then we'll go into this? Yeah, I'm, okay. when, when I was, you know, if you look at the budget the way it's been over the past few years, we've been underfunding the capital fund and moving money out of reserves. Um, so. What I was suggesting is taking that payroll tax that we contribute from the capital or from the from the payroll to the capital fund from a half percent to three quarters of a percent. Um, so when you project that out and you and you eliminate those transfers, it's essentially a budget neutral impact. At least it should be roughly budget neutral. Um, but then it really puts you know those discussions on if we need you know if we want to do above and beyond, then we're talking about those transfers out. Versus just planning to transfer money out, and not and not necessarily fully funding what we know we're going to need from you know roads, uh, police cars, fire trucks, dump trucks, whatever the, those other capital investments would be. So the difference in the two, and 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 uh, and um, it's not completely neutral because there's about it's a, that that quarter of a percent is about eight hundred thousand dollars, and we're transferring somewhere around. 600,000 into the capital fund. So we're going to be losing a couple hundred thousand. But but the bottom line is if we do it that way and we don't transfer any more mon monies out, um, at the end of 2019, uh, instead of having the 1.7, <clears throat> yeah, 1.7, we got 1.4. So there's very little difference between the two either way you do it. The only thing is, and Steve and I talked about this in depth today, and this is, this is up to you all. Because what what it, what it does, the ordinance that was in, that was that was enacted, and I believe, and we got talking about this, and I and I looked it up, and I don't have the date, but about in 2010, that's when we did this, started this capital fund, and, and put that half a percent when the payroll tax was increased by that half percent, along those same lines that I think Mr. Meyer is talking about, wanting to make sure that we could fund capital projects, and and it's been a great thing. Uh, talking, you know, from the, the, the two fields that I've been in here, looking at it and seeing from the time before until the time after, we've had the funds available to do those things. Talking tonight about being able to take this money and, and transfer some, we have some reserves to, to do that because we were doing all of the capital out of our general fund before. And, and, and yes, can we always spend more money on capital? And yeah, and I think there were several years, especially during the recession, that we, that we did not fund it correctly. And, and we went, whether we had the money or not, but there was still not enough money going in there to keep up the infrastructure, to keep up the sidewalks, to keep up the roads and all the other things that we do, our buildings and things. We've now tried to correct that in the last few years, and I think we've made some progress in getting there, but we can always make more. Um, but if you put that over there and you write that ordinance the same way it's written today, then that three quarters of a percent 
would be going into that from our payroll tax. Then you have absolutely no discretion whatsoever. So now, then, I look for, and I, and I think in our projections, we'll, we'll say this, that, you know, you'll see our reserves shrinking and what they are. So then in time, when it comes up, what do you do? 